Welcome to the Osmosis Daily Report on the Coronavirus Pandemic. I'm Dr. Rishi Desai. I'm the Chief Medical Officer at Osmosis. I'm a pediatric infectious disease physician, and I'm a former CDC viral disease detective. So what I wanted to talk about today is pregnancy. And to start us out, I always like to look at where we are on the map uh, and where we are with total cases. And Johns Hopkins has a great website where we have a total of 290,000 cases now in the U.S. Uh, leading the world and total deaths in the world, 62,376 as of today. One organization I always look to is ACOG, the American Colleges of, of, of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. They put out a, a guideline on what physicians should do if they come across a person that is pregnant and has symptoms of COVID-19. Specifically, they outline four symptoms, uh, fever, cough, shortness of breath, and then a fourth one, gastrointestinal symptoms. So that's actually kind of interesting that they threw that in. Um, they want to essentially divide people into three groups, elevated risk, moderate risk, and low risk. If you have any severe symptoms, and one of the main symptoms that I just mentioned, difficulty breathing or shortness of breath is on that list as the very first one, uh, or if you have other symptoms like you know coughing up blood or unable to keep liquid down or being dehydrated, that's elevated risk. That's a person that should immediately go to the ER to get evaluated, of course, calling ahead of time so that they're aware that you're coming. The next group is the folks that don't have any of those severe symptoms, but they have comorbidities like hypertension or diabetes. They might have some obstetric complications like preterm labor, or they may be of uh, maybe in a social situation where they can't take care of themselves too well, uh, those folks would be moderate risk. They might go to an ambulatory or outpatient setting, and there you might do things like at least check vital signs, uh, do a physical exam, maybe get imaging like a chest x-ray, a chest CT, to figure out you know what's going on for this kind of person. The last kind of person would be someone that doesn't have any of those issues and is essentially uh, pregnant with symptoms but is otherwise well and pretty mild, and those folks are considered low risk and can essentially stay home. So in conjunction with that, The Lancet has also put out this uh, paper, Guidelines for Pregnant Women with Suspected SARS-CoV-2 Infection. These are people that might have been exposed and you're trying to figure out what to do. And one thing that they brought up in this paper that I think is worth keeping in mind is that SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19, is a coronavirus. And there, we've had a couple of other coronaviruses in the past 20 years, so specifically MERS and SARS. These two coronaviruses were both associated with things like uh, miscarriage, premature delivery, intrauterine growth restriction, and maternal death. So we do know that other coronaviruses have been associated with these bad outcomes. And the question really is, is the current coronavirus also associated with those as well? And what they point out right now is there's no evidence in severe outcomes for mothers and infants. So I want it to be very clear, as of right now, it doesn't seem like mothers and infants have severe outcomes, and I haven't come across any data to suggest that that would be the case. So they're not considered high risk, but of course there's a lot of scrutiny and a lot of watchfulness around this group because they are generally, pregnant women are generally thought to be immunocompromised in some degree. So this is why everyone's kind of watching closely, but at the moment there's no suggestion that there is higher risk for pregnancy or for infants. Now, another thing they did in that publication was they put out a really cool table where they spell out what it would mean for you uh, if you have a pregnant woman who is exposed to COVID-19. And they spell out what exposure actually means. So they say travel to an affected country, which, let's face it, we're in a pandemic. Every country has some cases. So that kind of uh, it goes out the window for me. The other one, close contact with a confirmed case. So for example, less than one meter for more than 15 minutes, less than three feet for, or about three feet for more than 15 minutes, living together or direct contact with body fluids. Specifically, uh, the ones I would uh, imagine would be the most relevant would be saliva and sexual body fluids. So if any of those things apply, then they say, you know, you should basically get that person tested and divide them immediately into asymptomatic and symptomatic. So if they're symptomatic and they test positive, that's a person that may need, uh, and symptomatic here is, if you look at their criteria, fever of more than 38 degrees and respiratory symptoms. So think back to that ACOG guidelines. These are the two they're kind of focused in on, is the respiratory symptoms and fever. If they have those and they're positive, they may need to get a, a hospital workup as well as isolation. 
If you're asymptomatic and you test positive, then they basically recommend isolation at home for a couple of weeks. And now a final point I want to make around this is, of course, if you have a pregnant woman, there's concern about delivery and what happens after delivery with the baby. So what they clearly say, and this is the CDC guidelines now, what they clearly say around that issue is that you should essentially try to separate uh, pregnant women that have COVID-19 from the baby when possible. In fact, it says that right here, that they should try to do that um, at least temporarily until the mom becomes cleared and is safe and doesn't need those sort of precautions anymore. And then of course there's the issue of breastfeeding. And with breastfeeding, just to be clear, there has been no uh, reported case that I've come across where there's been virus in the breast milk. So first and foremost, that has not yet been seen. That is of course a thought and a risk, and so people are looking and they're gonna to continue to look for that. But with breastfeeding specifically, moms with COVID-19 are recommended to breastfeed, but the way they're recommended to do it is by using a breast pump. In fact, right here they talk about the fact that moms should use a breast pump, thoroughly clean the breast pump, and then ideally give that milk to a newborn to be given by a healthy caregiver. So someone else should be delivering that milk to the baby. Now keep in mind, the real risk of getting COVID-19 to a baby uh, in this sort of setting is really not thought to be the breast milk itself, but it would be respiratory droplets from the mom. So she should still be uh, masking herself and keeping herself protected uh, so that the baby doesn't get the, uh, the droplets. But that's really the, the real risk there. Mm. So I hope you found that helpful. It covers some of the key points around pregnancy as we know them today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I want you to hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon right below uh, to get more of these daily updates. And visit osmosis.org slash COVID-19. We have a ton of awesome free resources on other aspects of this. We're going to be doing this daily, hitting a new topic every day. Remember, do your part, raise the line, and flatten the curve. We're all in this together. Take care.